On to part three, which is releases part two for June. Uh, Not pieces part two. (laughs) Huh? Not pieces part two. (laughs) No. Uh, First, we have Jui from Momoland, Lee Yu Jung from One Million, uh, Risa Bay, and M Bro, whoever the hell that is, um, (laughs) doing a CF song for a latte water park, uh, Play Your Summer. God. <laughs> Dewey is a CF monster. She's in everything now. And also, I'm glad... Well, it's because uh, she, she sucks like a well, meme. She's a meme. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's she a meme. Like, really literally, like, Momoland is popular by the power of memes. Like, that is... So, how, much, let, how much you guys want to bet uh, Japanese Jue is going to get into the Protoss 48 oh, group, and then they're going to have a CF together. They need to. They need to. <laughs> That'd be so adorable, but... Uh, yeah, I... Is there anything that Lotte Lotte doesn't own in Korea? Like honestly, <laughs> they, own, they don't own CJ or Samsung. I mean, yeah, but they're, they're just they're just another or like huge cable, com- cable company. So or a uh, bunch of other companies. <laughs> yeah, All I don't the cables know. <laughs> or Hyundai. <laughs> For, but um, I almost had a heart attack because Yu Yu Jung was wearing like one thousand dollar sneakers next to the water. <laughs> Like the the sneakers she's wearing are called shattered Jordan One shattered backboards and yeah those are super expensive. Um, also, uh, M Bro is a fucking lyrical genius. <laughs> with quote, "Hey bro, so what's up, bro?" That's literally how he introduces himself in the song. <laughs> hey bro, what's up, bro? <laughs> I've Sounds never hard. heard of, I've never heard of him before, but I I'm I, I don't think I'm interested in see, hearing any more of his music to be completely honest. You don't want to be his uh, bro? No. I'm sorry. Ne- uh, next, we have Just This, Kid Millie, Noel, and Young B's collaboration song, Indigo. Just you, Andrew. Okay. Um, This is actually something that we I was looking through when we were, like, before we weren't going to KCON or something like that. But yeah, it's basically a sequel to Ung Freestyle, a good cypher track. The only one everyone was really familiar with was Noel, but Pico's, Pico's hard. Um... I love how like the video kind of like goes in like a circle or whatever. So like whenever when, whenever they, they transition, whenever a new rapper started their cipher. So yeah, this is I need to check out the rest of the, the people on this because I'm not that I've heard of Justice, but I'm not as familiar with them. So I definitely need to do my research. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I thought the song was good. It just like I don't know, it didn't do it for me. I guess because yeah. Unk Freestyle hit me hard. I loved that song, but yeah. Next, we have Katie's debut digital single, Remember. This this is uh, Katie... God, what's her last name? Katie Kim, winner of K-Pop Star K-pop 4, Star. was signed to YG, left to, to join Axis, which is f- founded by the former creative director of YG named S-I-N-X-I-T-Y. So, Sin City? Cynics? Yeah, I probably. Know. Yeah, but... So, yeah, it... I don't know how the deal worked out, but it seems like... Even though she left YG, YG is still distributing the music, which is why it's on the YG channel. But... It's definitely good that she left YG because there's no way in hell something like this would come out under YG's... The YG, like, main sort of brand. Because it's so... Oh. it Like, she's, she's American, so she's definitely yeah. pulling influences from, like... Kanye, like, visually, and, like, this is, like, like that Western American type of R&B that you just don't hear here in, or just don't hear in Korea, so I'm glad she, she, she was literally freed from the dungeon, and YG still has to foot the bill for it, which is kind of funny. Uh, I think this song is really good. It's just, like, it's not K-pop, like, at all. It's Which is fine. <laughs> it's, yeah, well, I, I, I know, it's just, like, uh, it seems like they're more trying to market her as a K-pop artist rather than a, uh... Just general like pop American pop artists, so I don't know. I, I guess it's just a little too American for me. I guess for uh, this what they're trying to do. Yeah. I think it. I think it's good though that we need more. We need more companies promoting Asian American artists and Asian artists, a la Eighty Eight mm. Rising, because we don't need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I feel I like definitely that's, agree about that. I because I feel like that's the future. I feel like you're like. 5, 10, 15 years from now, you're not necessarily going to need the uh, the cr- traditional Korean, like, music system in its current state. Because, I mean, well, I mean, hey, BTS is sort of proving that you don't really need a big company behind you to sort of gain, garner fame. And it's with, like, the rise of SoundCloud and, like, with the in the internet age, you don't really need that much promotion or that much 
I don't know, just like firepower when it comes to like marketing and all that sort of stuff. You just need your song to catch on fire on the internet. So, yeah, I, I, I think she has a future, and I'm glad that she's able to just have way more creative input on her music than she would have ever gotten under YG. So, yeah, obviously, um, um, I'd like to see more of this, and I don't know if she's going to be the only one under Access or if they're going to go out and sign more artists like this, but it's, it's, I'm definitely interested in what they're going to do going forward. Uh, next, we have Kim Dong Han's debut mini album D Day, with the title track Sunset. Um, this has some really awesome EDM instrumentals. I really liked this song a lot. So yeah, there he is, one of two f- uh, former JBJ members making their solo debut. Uh, got like I was saying, uh, or well, in my mind, I was thinking like, wow, this is really like shiny influence and lo and behold like in an yeah. in- interview he's just like yeah like he basically is just he's just trying to emulate like the style that Temin does in his solo a- solo material so it's it's very evident so it's like it's a it's a great yep. um it's a great debut and I'm glad that JBJ got popular enough to, so that they're able to launch their solo careers in such a way so um yeah he he has the much like Temin he definitely has a stage presence and the vocal talent to sort of like pull this off so I, yeah I was very impressed and if we did yeah. cover this, Cooper would have killed us. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, next, we have Lee Jana's full-length album, Jana Shikdang Full Course, uh, with the title track Run featuring Gray, or with Gray, technically. You can definitely feel sh- the Gray influence, or the yeah. production on it, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, the thing I was going to say about Lee Jana is... Uh, yeah, she always comes out with like really weird but like really good s- sounding like yeah. songs and her voice is very like uh i guess high pitched so it kind of adds to a little bit to the weirdness i'd like to see her uh um uh collaborate with someone like lim kim or something if she crawls yes. under whatever rock she's under lim right kim now. needs to come <laughs> back in general what the hell has happened yeah yeah Ugh. i have no idea but yep so uh this is way different from anything else she's because the one song I really liked oh, from yeah, her last sure. year was Random, like because it, it's it's very un antenna like I actually saw her live last year at the Antenna concert so Antenna is very like instrumental focused like sort of like very indie in that sort of way and this is I think collaborating with Grey was an awesome move because it's just it's such a different type type of sound for Ijena and it works so well I love the. The electric keys definitely carry the song so well. The sick solo that she has in the middle of the song is just incredible. So, yeah, I'm I'm glad that this collaboration came out. It's definitely one of the better collaborations I've heard all year. Mm. Next, we have Longwo's debut digital single, Clover, featuring you, Mirei. Um, it's you, Mirei. That's yeah. all I really cared about in the song. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's all I remember in my like, notes. Is, yes, she has two right. <laughs> short, really good verses. But. Longuo is another member of JBJ that also debuted, but I feel like, yeah, this one wasn't as interesting. Even, well, Yun, Yun Mirai's part was good, but yeah. I yeah. wonder, it's interesting though, because he, he was in Longuo and Shihyun, like a duo, because there was two of them that ended up being in Produce 101 Season 2, so I don't know, maybe this just solo stuff is just on the side until they get back to that, but... Yeah, again, he's mm-hmm. gonna, an, another person that's going to have relative success out of uh, the success of JBJ. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Lutz, Your Side of the Bed, featuring Eric Nam. So, yeah, we, uh, they were the opening act for Eric Colin. Nam. Colin. Yes, Colin. Colin. Yeah. Colin. <laughs> no one's going to understand that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, they, 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 they literally announced it, or they released that, the, like, the night that we went to, like, when we got home for the concert, they released it at midnight. So, yeah. Hmm. This song was actually really catchy, like just like even without mm. the Eric Nam like addition to it. So, yeah, I'm glad that they got to collaborate. And I, I don't know how they ended up getting like to open for him, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Lunique's a digital single reflection featuring Pepe. Um, not the frog. It's how- <laughs> no, not the frog. <laughs> it's house music, and it's really good. I really yeah, like house music. A really sick house. I think okay. Lunic, I think, is the DJ. Pepe is the vocalist. The, the frog. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not the frog. Um, yeah, I think you should actually look at the Pepe more because most of her songs are... It's it, it's Tropical House with female vocals, so you're obviously going to like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this was pretty This is pretty good. Uh, hmm. I thought I thought the song was really good, and another thing I liked uh, was the uh, the album art. It's like this yeah, close-up picture of her like half-submerged in water. 
up to her uh, nose. She has really and, nice eyes. Uh, what, yeah, she does. And then it's also got the uh, sort of uh, the like title the, just the, like yeah, vertically the down, down the, br- the bridge of her nose. Yeah. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, I agree. I did like the cover a lot. Uh, next, we have Melody Day's digital single, Restless. Um, I've always thought Melody Day deserves better. They're a really underrated vocal group. They they actually do a ton of OSTs. Um, yeah. So I think that's one of the reasons why they're not well known. Um, because of that, like... They're they're not like promoting and stuff, um, but yeah, the song is really good. It has a Ready Player One concept, basically. I don't know. Apparently, like the lyrics are like, oh, like a f- relationship's falling apart, so they're gonna look for this like really like nice looking white dude in like the virtual world or whatever to be all their boyfriends or something. I don't know. Um, I feel like that's another part of the the K-pop drinking game. You drink whenever there's a random white person. <laughs> oh no, that, that, that is a, that is a rule. Anytime there's okay. a non-Asian person on screen. Oh, God. Okay. I mean, it, this is good. It's just, I don't really know what direction Melody Day is going in musically, because if you listen to, like, the last, like, including this, if you listen to the last three singles, it's just been all over the place. Like, um, there was, like, one that was, like, sort of, like, a really, like, sweeping ballad, like, uh, then there was Kiss on the Lips, which was basically mm-hmm. a reggae type, and then they released this, which is great, but, yeah, I don't know, I, I really don't know what they're sort of like what their thing is yet like maybe that's probably maybe that's why they're not really like gaining any traction is because they they're not really known for any particular type of sound but i don't know they'll get there eventually because they they're, there's definitely talent here with in vocals i mean if you're doing osts you have to be good at singing mm-hmm. anything else jacob um no, I, I basically all I really pointed out was like, like as always, Melody Day's vocals were really, really good. So yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, I think they're in a similar boat to how like Spicko was, where, like, yep. they, they're very underrated as far as their vocals go. Like when I started mm-hmm. standing Mama Moo when they first came out, I was really worried they're gonna fall into that pit. So I'm really glad that they actually took off because mm-hmm. a lot of the the vocal heavy girl groups they don't seem to take off as well for whatever reason even they though just, korea seems to really like that style of music it's, but it's weird, international fans don't really care much for this though that's probably why yeah. i guess it just really hasn't gotten wide widespread and obviously if they're more known for their osts i don't know how many people are gonna look up their regular music either so yeah next we have migio's mini album rain sound with the title track of the same name Formerly known as Dahye from Bob Girls slash Love Us, um, this was her debut mini. Uh, uh, it's not marked as a debut. Oh no! Um, the, she had a pre-release track, but this is like her actual like debut oh, like okay. mini album. So, love her voice. Um, kind of got a haze Sodan vibe going with it. Like it's basically it's basically like her interpretation of like You Clouds Rain, <laughs> like kind of like blatantly, but. Um, yeah, I'm glad that she's able to, I mean, failing out of two groups kind of sucks, but hopefully she does well, um, as a solo artist, because looking into, like, Bob Girls and Love Us, yeah, I don't think she was gonna do, uh, the music style that they did was, wasn't gonna work out well, so, yeah, this was, this was pretty good. Next, we have Minsaw's digital single, Is Who? The Diary of Youth. <sighs> um, just pretty so, much just so an good. IU song, it's really good. It's, well, if, I think what made this stand out for me is like the uh, like the 1940s style like instrumentals like that you hear yeah. in like old cartoons it's, and yeah, movies it's and stuff. basically it's it, basically like Cuphead ragtime like type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. It was really really cool, and her voice is incredible. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I hope she uh, catches on in the way that IU has, I guess, because she does have a very similar vibe. Uh, but I think I think she is different enough that she can stand on her oh, own. Oh yeah, sure. yeah. She's, like, this, she's this yeah. caught fire really in good. Korea. This has yeah. six six and a half million views because she got the she was in a um, monthly melody single release with Yoon Jung Shin, which did mm. super well. So yeah, she she blew up immediately. So it was it was only a matter of time. Also, in looking up, um, she was supposed she was almost a member of G Friend, like she was. In, she was in Source Entertainment Dude. as a trainee, which is which just explains why. That even actually would have been kind of cool, actually. If it, it, that is only if she could still do solo. <laughs> yeah. 
which we'll get to later. And do in terms songs, of with, and do songs songs. with uh and do songs with Yuju, please. <laughs> oh my god, them them two on vocals just re- would destroy me. Uh yeah, like I guess basically if you don't like I haven't heard this song yet, it's basically if IU did rebuy. That's all you need to like a rebuy by Ak- Akmu. Like that's all you need to know going in and she's look the visual element of it was amazing, like the weird like marionette type of thing. Her outfits were amazing. Choreography was amazing. It's like if IU did more choreography. <laughs> so She's definitely she's definitely gonna blow up. I feel in Korea, I don't know if she's gonna blow up over here in the U.S., but she's definitely gonna get super big. Uh, next we have N from Vix's uh, Inyun performance video. This is from a or it's a dance cover or like a dance performance of a song from an older Korean drama called The King and the Clown. I just put it on here just because this is insane. It's basically dream with a dream in a dream. Um, by 10 except like the like, different choreography but yeah this was awesome uh, mm-hmm. facial expressions are incredible it, you don't often say that male choreography is graceful but he's very graceful and powerful when he needs to be yeah this is awesome uh, yeah I don't I don't know why they did this but I want more of it uh, it came out on his birthday oh okay that's all. <laughs> That's all. what do I want to do on my birthday? I want to do a dance cover from like a, a 2005 like OST. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Uh, next we have Nada and Minam Young's digital single Dozer. Minam Young <laughs> can sing. I mean, the rest of the songs like kind of garbage, but I'm I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nada. Like. <laughs> Like, She's usually a good rapper, but yeah, this uh, one just did not sound it stand out to me at all. So and also yeah. like the like the uh big tits part I was like oh that's so try hard. Wait, they said so, that she said big tits. She literally said oh, big man. tits. And, uh, I, I I wanted to cringe so bad. She said she said big tits while like pushing up like that her part, chest. I guess I was just like oh no, it's gonna be one of those types of stuff. Uh, but Mina Young is literally the only reason I care about this song, and. I mean, like, the music video is kind of garbage, too. Like, they're like, oh, we're, like, the bad girls in high school and everything. We're, like, the, like, black lipstick. And, yeah, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for Minim Young's surprisingly good vocals and her amazing, like, talented, like, dancing and everything, yeah, I wouldn't have cared. But mm-hmm. I wonder if she's going to become an idol. <laughs> I wonder how this happened. <laughs> I doubt it. It's probably uh, they're just friends with each other. Yeah, God. yeah, probably. Why do why do all the beautiful people ha- have like really good like secret hidden te- like she can dance, she can sing. Oh, I thought you were gonna ask why are all the beautiful people friends with other beautiful people? Friends with I people. Like, yeah, I mean that's, that's, that's why that you gotta that make too. that's why you gotta make friends with a hot girl so she can <laughs> introduce you to her friends. I mean that, that too, that too, that too. But I mean, damn, like, what doesn't she have in life right now? I'm super jealous. <laughs> Uh, next we have NCTU's Ten and Taeyong's Baby Don't Stop Thai version. Um, same great, amazing song. Uh, same issue I have with Japanese versions of Korean songs where I want to sing the lyrics and they're different and it's at weird. F- at first, I couldn't but tell the difference. It's good. So I think it works just as well. So yeah, it yeah no, well. it's good. Like I don't, I don't it's the same. Like Japanese I was surprised because like like the only other Thai song I think I've heard. Is uh, when they did uh, the Thai version of "Let It Go" and "Frozen," but that didn't sound very oh, good at no. all. Oh <laughs> no! I, yeah, I that just don't like that song. Period. But idea. I love that song. Can, can you remember? Can you the remember any version. other Thai like Shodan Thai like? So can you remember under, any other Thai K-pop idols making like songs in Thai or like remaking any of their song? I don't know. This is this is pretty cool though. The, the, the NCT like their SM is basically trying to like lay the groundwork for NCT. Whatever it, NCT Bada. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because they, 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 it's almost definitely that he's gonna be he's gonna be the leader of the uh, Southeast Asian group, and I don't know what language they're gonna sing in, because there's a lot of countries in Southeast Asia. But I'm glad that they're making the effort to sort of like they're really like doubling down on expanding NCT to Southeast Asia in this way. I'm gonna guess that they're probably gonna focus on Thai and maybe Vietnamese. Yeah, probably. Because the yeah, I feel like. Thai's sort of been like the hotbed when it comes to Korean, like, like new, like Korean. Yeah, they uh, they always companies. have concerts in Bangkok. Yeah, they love, yeah they love K-pop. Yeah, there. they love they love K-pop over there. So, uh, next is Neon Punch's debut single, "A Moonlight." Um, I thought the song had really good instrumentals. The vocals were pretty good. Um, I thought it was a really really good debut for a girl group. Um, so definitely gonna keep an eye on them. 
Bekha, also known as Kim Sewell, was on Mix 9, and she's the first person to escape from that god-awful show and debut. <laughs> I don't know. I, she did, I think she got eliminated before the end, but I'm, I'm glad that at least somebody got to make a debut out of that god-awful show. Uh, I think was, they filmed this in the same place that they filmed Energetic, like not even joking. Mm. Like the, the, the screenshot I have right now up on the screen is the same place. You can tell it's pretty low budget, but this is it's mm. awesome house beat. Yeah, I yeah. think, uh, like, basically my first reaction to this was, like, this is pretty much what I figured Luna YYXY would come out with, but then they didn't. But it's, <laughs> it's fine, because I still love Love Forever. Love Forever. But, uh, yeah, like, this, I, I really like this song. I'm definitely adding this one. I'm going to watch out for them. Yeah, mm-hmm. this, it, this is a great debut track. Definitely going to keep, we have to keep an eye on the, out for them. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Nia's digital single, We Don't. Uh, great f- female R&B vocalist. It's like if Hoodie had more trap beats on her music. So, yeah, this is another one of the underground artists that I had to add. I really liked it. I really enjoy her voice. I can't wait till Avnet releases like the official video. Yeah, I need to hear the audio. Yeah, Yuri. Yeah. Yuri started off the English, and that's yeah. when I looked at Aubrey. Yeah, I was yeah. like, whoa, 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 whoa. these are the lyrics. And then it stayed English for the rest yep. of the song. So yep. good. Yeah, they so, did the it first. It was such a. It was so good. They did the first verse and chorus in Korean, like the normal yeah. version, yep. and then and like now there's gonna be a video without me.